Okay, this video is why are non-smoking women getting lung cancer? The incidence of women who do not smoke cigarettes that are getting lung cancer has significantly gone up and the question is why? Most often they're adenocarcinomas. Um, it can be secondhand smoke, let's say the husband, the boyfriend or whatever is smoking a lot. But the big thing that's of interest here is cooking oil fumes. Um, frying food is a bad idea. I notice that some people in my house will fry food and I don't like it. I don't care what they're frying. I always get out of the kitchen. It bothers me. I'm kind of sensitive, so I always get made fun of, but I believe that's a sign of being intelligent, okay? My nose or my eyes, my face gets all greasy and slimy, tells me that's unpleasant, then I avoid it. Um, and one thing I thought was a little funny, these articles will tell you, well, there was a 50% decreased risk of lung cancer if they had a fume extraction hood over the place where they're frying the food. Okay, great, but you know, why not get a 100% reduction in risk by don't fry food? You know, cooking with oil is just not a healthy thing to do. Um, some of the things they would found in the, find in the cooking oil fumes were benzopyrenes, those are carcinogenic, they're often found in cigarettes, even formaldehyde was being found. Um, and these led to other chemicals that were causing oxidative stress. You know, when oxidative stress is when the amount of oxidative damage in the body overwhelms the amount of available antioxidants to control it. So you start getting tissue damage, and they can, they can measure that by they'll find things in the blood and in the urine, um, biomarkers of oxidative stress. And these will be increased in people exposed to cooking fumes. Um, and this can be somebody just frying food at home. Also, people who work in restaurants where they fry a lot of food, they have a big increase in the amount of oxidative stress markers. And they just compare the staff that works in the kitchen versus the staff that sits out in the dining room only. Um, of course, you know, big risk factors for uh, lung cancer. Of course, cigarette smoking is the main thing, but um, they found other populations like the Americans who smoke cigarettes had much more lung cancer than the Japanese or the Papua New Guinea, let's say go back to the 1970s and 80s. And it was thought that this was because the Americans also ate a high fat diet. Uh, compared to the Papua New Guinea population, the Americans had more than six times as much lung cancer. And again, the Papua New Guinea were smoking a lot, but they were eating a sweet potato diet, whereas the Americans were eating a high fat diet. So not only you have the high fat, you got the high animal protein with the unique amino acids, leucine and methionine, they all increase mTOR. The dietary excess fat, all that saturated fat, is also going to cause insulin resistance. That's going to increase mTOR, um, mammalian target of rapamycin, also called mechanistic target of rapamycin. That's the nutrient sensing pathway that tells cells to divide and replicate. In addition, yeah, there's increased iron available in the meat or in the iron fortified foods like cereals and grains that are iron fortified. All of those things can increase mTOR. So they're all bad. Fat, iron, and amino acids, leucine and methionine, also arginine, but that's not as uh, strong a correlate to meat. Um, not to mention that, they also get more chronic bronchitis. I'm in a moment, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of papers about this, but I just wanted to give some of the background information. Other risk factors for getting lung cancer, if a person had HPV, same virus that increases the risk of cervical cancer is associated with increased risk of lung cancer. Um, it's also increased risk of head and neck cancer, if you're having oral sex. And that's what Michael Douglas had. Uh, if they had former tuberculosis, that's pretty rare. Somebody working in a coal mine or some other chronic exposure to fumes. In China, it's thought that there's a big increase in uh, lung cancer and people due to air pollution exposure. Wildfires can also increase the incidence of lung cancer in people. Some people are genetically just more vulnerable to it. So you don't know if you're more genetically vulnerable or not. So the wise move is just assume you are and you know live as healthy as possible and hopefully that'll help you to prevent it. Um, Let's see what else was interesting. If you're going to cook, if you have to be in a room there, open the window if you can or get one of those fume extraction hoods over the stove. Um, if a person has a lung cancer, uh, what can be done in these cases is do a biopsy. This could be done with bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy does require sedation though typically and check for this one mutation called EGFR mutation. I spoke to some pulmonologists and asked their opinion about this. Um, and they said the benefit of doing that is sometimes if you get one of these uh, characteristic mutations, it'll respond well to a specific targeted form of uh, chemotherapy, medication therapy. And it's one pulmonologist said he saw one patient stage four lung cancer come off the ventilator and have long-term survival when they had had a biopsy with this GFR, EGFR mutation and were given that specific chemo agent. And that's just one patient that's anecdotal, but who knows, that might be useful. Those meds do have significant side effect risks like hepatitis, pulmonary complications, etc. Okay, I'll show you a couple papers now. And there were tons of papers on these subjects. Oh, I've got my, i got to shrink this thing here. Uh, so here it is, you know, association between lung cancer and ambient particulate matter. That just means the amount of air pollution. So the more air pollution, the more lung cancer. Uh, cooking oil fumes, the more cooking oil fumes, you know, cooking with oil, frying food, 
the more lung cancer. And here's just a couple papers. Same thing. Cooking oil fumes are a risk factor for lung cancer. I will, it all, I've always really bothered me to be in the kitchen when somebody was frying food. I always won't stay in the kitchen. I won't have a conversation with somebody if they're doing that. I find it real unpleasant. And like I said, it's been my experience in life that people will make fun of you, but they're just being conformist and stupid. If something's unpleasant, it smells bad, or you get a lousy feeling, or you get a tightness in your throat when they're breathing, get out of that room. It's bad for you. Don't go, don't go by what they say. Go by what you feel. You can trust that. Okay, so urinary hydroxypyrene and malone, uh, malone aldehyde, malone dialdehyde, okay, and, and male workers in Chinese restaurants. So the point was, the male workers that had spent time in the kitchen had a lot more of these biomarkers of oxidative stress and DNA damage than did the ones that were out in the dining room. So just another indicator that the cooking oil fumes were toxic, causing real damage to their bodies. Okay, here's another thing. Human 8-oxoguan, another marker of oxidative stress. Same thing. The more people are around the cooking oil fumes, the more of these uh, chemicals show up in their body, in their blood and in their urine. Okay, exposure to cooking oil fumes. They get The more people are exposed to cooking oil fumes, the more chronic bronchitis they get. These are like lung damage like a smoker would get. So it's pretty stupid. And this is the one I thought was funny. Yeah, they say there's more lung cancer if you're, you know, you're more exposed to cooking oil fumes, but the 50% reduction. So yeah, of course, a, a restaurants ought to be required to have those uh, types of extraction fume hoods. But still, the smart move, obviously, is just don't use this stuff. So anyways... Um, I thought that was a little bit interesting. I hope you found that helpful.